kick us off, we're going to have Phil Runyon from a company called Veridat to talk about his platform oh, for yeah. data integrity. Am I on? Oh, hello? Yes, perfect. Good morning. For those of you who do not dart for the doors to go uh, caffeinate and uh, load up on carbohydrates, thank you. I am uh, totally aware that uh, data integrity as a whole is certainly not the uh, sexiest topic on the dais, but I assure you, each and every one of us are directly impacted every single day by other people's decisions and how we willingly give our trust to them. So with that said, let's take a quick trip down memory lane of some really poor decision makers. Volkswagen. Dieselgate cost Volkswagen $25 billion in actual cost, right? Disregard all the immeasurable aspects of it, but imagine for those people who bought a Volkswagen diesel in the United States, where, it's where the impact was, after they gave it back, do you think they bought another one? I personally wouldn't. Let's look at Wells Fargo. Imagine if Meta ID had existed, and instead of Wells Fargo, your, your favorite teller that you see every Friday go cash your check, if she was going, or he, excuse me, was going to open up, say, 10 credit cards and five savings accounts in your name, right? But with the Meta ID or other services on chain, you would actually have to be asked permission to be able to utilize your data to be able to do this. It costs them $3 billion. Let's be honest, it's a rounding error for them. Wells Fargo is not uh, immune to uh, poor, poor decision making, we'll call it for lack of a better word. Drugs. We all take them. We all need them. We all love them. Some of us like them more than others. So the generic drug world uh, basically got a rude awakening when Catherine Eban delivered her book, which basically details a 10-year uh, uh, deep dive into where our generic drugs come from, which a bulk of them from India and China. And that's not necessarily the problem. The problem, though, is that you ran into companies like Rambaxi here, who, uh, as part of this book, um, was found to have engaged so actively in fraud in their manufacturing and their, their uh, R&D processes, they were basically creating data on the fly. So as opposed to doing a six to 18 month stability test and say a new way to make, I don't know, an opioid, they would do it in the span of an afternoon. They would take paperwork that was supposed to be generated over this period of time and they would put it in a steam room so that it had the visual look and feel of something that was clearly 18 months old. Imagine if they applied that type of thinking or innovation, which is a very tough word to use right now, uh, if they actually applied that to doing good things, right? That cost them pretty much their business. Half a billion dollars, of course, nobody went to jail because we don't put people in jail for stuff like this. Again, 200 drugs, falsified data, 40 countries distributed, including the United States. That's right, potheads. Your weed too is totally getting hosed. There's a big thing right now in the market where, because these testing facilities, it's pretty much pay to play. Yes, there are, there's oversight, but as you, a grower, you could just as easily go, you know what, person who tested my weed, this clocked in only 16% in the market right now, they demand 30 plus percent. So instead of me taking it on the chin financially, here's 25 grand. How about now it says 35%, okay? Because it's just electronic, delete, 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 your one seven now becomes three five, no problem. Or let's say the pot that gets tested has mold in it, which has happened. Does anybody here want to smoke mold? He does. Oh, okay, perfect. Right. <laughs> he had his hand all this like. I thought you were asking if we did. Oh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so, so again, to my point though is that blockchain would have been able to capture these things on the fly. So before anybody had the genius idea of pressing the delete button, you are held to a higher standard. You are held accountable. You will be caught. It's no longer uh, uh, you know, a, a when strategy, which is how a lot of these companies, they operate, not just, again, the, the, the drug testing facilities, but in general. They're operating under saying, like, we can do this for as long as humanly possible, make as much money as possible with the end consumer or even your business partners on the hook eventually you get caught. Why do we have to wait to find out that somebody with whom we are interacting with, business or otherwise, has been a bad actor? So we talked about some financial costs here, um, measurable costs, if you will, but let's talk about immeasurable. So your reputation damage. To my point earlier, if you found out that Wells Fargo had pumped a bunch of accounts in your name, do you think those people went around like, 
oh, you know what? You didn't mean it. I'll totally keep my account and everything else with you guys. No, those people jump ship immediately. Those people did not buy another Volkswagen. Those people did not continue to buy pot knowing it came from a certain farm. When you burn that bridge, it becomes scorched earth because we love nothing more than to write a totally horrible review of somebody and let them know, not today, never again, you will not get my business, right? Your competitors, they leverage this. So again, loss of business, diminished stockholder confidence. The people, if you owned stock in Wells Fargo or Volkswagen, do you think they double, well, actually they probably did because people are very greedy. They probably, yeah, they probably shorted it and then bought it back later on. But your confidence in your stockholders, is that really the type of stockholder that you want who's betting on you to fail? And of course, workforce diversions. How many people and how many hours and how many dollars in your organization, if you're screwing around, are you losing because people are not actually doing their job, they're trying to catch up, they're trying to cover up, they're trying to do anything other than get their head lopped off in a public fashion. Here's a really good example. Subway, has anybody gone and had a tuna fish sandwich at Subway since it came out that literally there was no tuna in it? Like, you're just not gonna do it. Like, they just recovered from Jared and now they've got tuna gate. Like, <laughs> what is going on with these people? And this here is probably my favorite slide and it's also the smallest and least legible. Uh, recently, I was uh, invited to a, a bachelor party in Vegas with uh, eight other people, uh, myself coming from the Midwest and everybody else coming from uh, Seattle. And one of the guys in the group, this is directly from our, our WhatsApp chat, he posted a picture that they were on a 737 Max, a Boeing 737. Does everybody remember a couple of years ago what happened with that? Yes, just assume by the nods we do. Perfect. His answer to this was, we are fucked. Now, I don't know why I scratched it out, and here I am, like, <laughs> apparently your ears are okay to hear, but your eyeballs can't see it. Could you imagine your brand being aligned with death? Here we are, like, just give it up to the Almighty. We're just gonna throw it to the wind and see what happens. That is their brand. This is what people think. When I read this, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, like, I looked. Thank God I wasn't on one. And the response, laughing my ass off, thought the exact same thing. It wasn't just one person. Everybody collectively was like, oh. there was a hold your breath moment. I don't imagine anybody in this room who is a business owner would want to be aligned with your consumer thinking you're fucked. So, oh, let's go, there we go. So how did we end up in this space? At the end of the day, trust really is the cornerstone of compliance and regulation. Our regulators are hoping that you're a good actor that the information that you are providing to them is in its original state. It hasn't been doctored, it hasn't been mucked with, but when you've got billions of dollars on the line, can we, I mean, I imagine I would do some pretty scandalous shit for a billion dollars. In fact, much less than that. I, my standards are pretty, pretty low, right? Because of the, the, the rate of innovation, we've gone from paper to digitalization, right? So this data is now easily edited, it's falsified. And on top of that, if you are in an industry like in the pharmaceutical world or if you're in supply chains, you're reliant upon other people's data, which is all siloed. You're now doing handoffs. You have to hope that the person before you was being a good actor and the person who's after you is also going, wow, I hope this is correct. Hope. Hope is not a strategy, which I meant to put in this slide because it's much more impactful. And again, these disparate systems, they have no interoperability. So as I'm sending it from one person to the next, you're not gonna get everybody on the same page. It's not like everybody's working out of your personal SharePoint, right, account. It's just not a thing. Everybody has their own systems, which is why they have these physical handoffs. And as an organization, audits, whether they're internal or external, they're very time and cost intensive. So instead of actually doing them, people just punt. Because again, you hope that the people within your organization are being good actors. So, the good news is that there are solutions for stuff like this, right? The solutions that exist, they need to be lightweight, they are lightweight, and they are interoperable. So it doesn't matter what ERP system you're using, it doesn't matter how you're capturing data, it doesn't even matter how you share it, right? We have technology today that allows APIs to capture it at the source before it can even be touched or edited, right? Blockchain technology allows us to then take that data and we can create digital twins from it, a term that you're going to hear a lot about today. So I'm glad I could be up here to say it first. But 
the blockchain itself not only is able to capture this information to an immutable uh, timestamp server, again, that timestamp server validates the time, the day of these events. It renders it immutable. So if somebody decides, your local testing facility says, you know what, I just took $25,000 to make this you know, 17% uh, weed into 35%, go ahead and edit it. It's gonna be captured and you're going to be caught. You'll be less inclined to be a bad actor when you constantly have sunlight raining down upon you, right? And because data and its iterations can easily be permissioned uh, and retrieved for reporting and audit purposes, it means that these time and cost intensive audit processes, again, internal or external, can be streamlined. You're no longer relying on people to dump a week's worth of work. You can go, hey, here's access to it because the public blockchain is public. It's permissionless. Anybody can interact with it. And that is exactly what we built at Veridat. Surprise, right? So with Veridat, what we do is that we allow our customers, and I am totally over right now. I'll hurry up, Jimmy. Uh, the customers define within their own workflow the data which is captured, right? So these APIs as part of our system will go in as information is being created before it's officially stored, before anybody can get their hands on it and muck with it. We capture that. We then create a digital twin or a hash of this information and it's stored to both their local service as well as our cloud service. Hash data is then added to the BSV blockchain and that cloud stored record is updated with a block ID. This allows an auditor or anybody else to be able to validate, okay, this was the information that was created. This is the time and data which it was created. And we can actually look on the public blockchain through any block explorer to be able to see this actually did happen. I'm not asking you to trust me because at the end of the day, we're not very trusting people anymore. Iterations on this data are also captured and it's anchored to the original transaction. So in the world of pharmaceutical R&D, which is an area that we work heavily in right now, which is very common, is that you will go in and do multiple iterations on uh, um, excuse me, uh, clinical trials, so especially in the R&D phases. So as you're making adjustments, we're able to capture every single one of those. So when an auditor, the FDA, comes in and says, look, how you got from A to Z is really interesting. Can you please provide us the data? We say, yes, we can. We can permission you to be able to access only that data within our reporting infrastructure to be able to see, yes, this was all the, this was the, the trajectory from the very first trial to every single time data was updated. And that proves, again, the time, the date, the occurrence of data and what was actually captured. So this originally stemmed from Juvatech because Dr. Robert Huber, my friend and now business partner, came to me and goes, Phil, um, we've got this very novel approach to, um, as a contract research organization with pharmaceutical companies, where before you go and you start dosing mice and rats, um, you can work with us before you make that jump to the 10 to $100 million uh, path. You work with us for say half a million dollars and we can give you an 80% uh, 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 chance at knowing which of your drug targets will actually make it to that next step. So basically spend half a million before you jump to the 10 to $100 million phases. I said, Robert, that's great. You know, why, why would anybody want to put that on chain? It doesn't make any sense. He goes, well, you're asking the wrong questions. The question is, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want your consumer, your business partners, to not have to be asked to trust you, but they can look at the data and go, aha, this is what transpired. You can trust what happened. So at Juvitech, what we did is that we built this originally as a very bespoke service. Basically, you have a, a behavioral uh, testing assay, uh, a feeding, if you will. So you have thousands of fruit flies. It captures in real time as they're interacting with these different drugs. Their automated phenotyping service captures the data. And then from there, as it's being captured, Veridat goes, whoop, we pull this up before anybody can actually get to it within their own data storage. So I'm seeing that image is kind of messed up. We then create a digital hash of this information. It goes up to BSV as well as to our cloud storage. That then ends up in their electronic lab notebook. This allows them so that when any drug company comes to them and says, wow, this data is really good, almost too good. Say, you know what, that's great. You don't have to trust it. I'm not asking you to trust me, but here's a way to be able to validate the time, date, and occurrence of all this information. Additional areas which we're operating right now. Supply chains, you're gonna hear a lot about this, so I'm not gonna harp on it. Again, I mentioned this earlier, disparate systems. The person before you, the person after you, there's no interoperability. Everybody's utilizing their own information and their physical handoffs. But with blockchain technology, again, a system such as Veridat that operates as an API, captures information every step of the way from supplier to patient, in this case, the, the pharmaceutical supply chain, can see previously and this is very beneficial to lower middle income countries 
where you'll find more than half of their pharmaceuticals are literally counterfeit. Flip a coin, you have that chance, literally, of having a legitimate drug. And I'm not talking about erectile dysfunction or hair loss pills. I'm talking about AIDS therapies, cancer treatments, things that literally people require to stay alive. 50-50, flip a coin. Today, we're in a bit of a jam. Again, hope is our strategy. We hope that people are being good actors. We don't need to do this because the solutions that exist for tomorrow, what we're working on at Veridat, are blockchain-based because blockchain is a proven technology to reduce error, fraud, and lost records. It's decentralized, it's trusted, and it's transparent, and most importantly, tamper-proof. Once it's on there, it's validated, and it can't be mucked with. It permits trusted and verifiable data provenance. Again, ironclad uh, version control. And because it is public, there is complete visibility uh, on the ledger and allows anyone access to be able to inspect and verify these records. So again, today, hope is our strategy, but it doesn't need to be. Let's move forward and utilize trusted technology that will allow us to not have to live in this just trust me world. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Thank you.